Hey folks, welcome to the channel. My apologies for the helmet hair and the shininess. I'm a little sweaty. We've been out on the trail today with our new budget mountain bike, the Schwinn Axum DP. Now, I'm a little spoiled. I usually ride a full suspension bike with uh, air suspension and dampening and all that good stuff, but I wanted a hardtail. This thing popped up on the cheap, so we're gonna check it out and I'll tell you the goods and the bads about this bike because it is a really decent budget mountain bike, but they did cut some corners to keep it within budget. So let's take a look at it. Now the Schwinn Axum DP is available from Walmart. I actually ought to order this one online. They've been completely out of stock in the stores. So we did get it at home and build it. And I'm gonna have another video linked down below on my other channel that shows how to assemble a mountain bike if that's something you need. But right now let's go over this thing. Now, if biking content interests you, or if wrenching on bikes interests you, or if just saving money interests you, you're gonna wanna hit the subscribe button because the footage you're seeing here is of this exact same bike that I tore completely apart and put back together and did a whole ton of upgrades on. Um, now, the trick with this though, is I did a bunch of upgrades without breaking the bank but also without cutting corners. I did it all with top shelf equipment and uh, saved a lot of money in doing that. So if this kind of stuff interests you, hit that subscribe button. This video will be out real soon. If it already is out, I'm gonna have it linked up in the top of the right corner right now and also in the end screens and down in the description. Now let's get back to the review. Now this thing checks pretty much all the boxes for modern mountain bikes, but there were some corners cut to get to check all those boxes, but it might not matter depending on the kind of riding you do. Some of it matters to the kind of riding I do. So we're gonna go over this thing and talk about what it is, what it is not, and then the parts you may wanna think about upgrading and the parts you may not need to bother upgrading. So let's get into the bike. Now let's start from the front. Um, here on the handlebars, we've got a flat bar. Some people prefer risers. I actually prefer a bar with a little bit of riser in it. And it's got a short stem, which makes the steering a little snappier. It's one of the newer kind of trends in mountain biking. If you were around 10 or 15 years ago, we all went with very long stems. Now we're going with short ones. So we checked off that box. Now moving up into the handlebars, we do have a push-pull, meaning push pull style shifter uh, to actuate your rear derailleur. There is no front derailleur so there is no front shifter. The brake levers are metal with a cable pull right here, and we're gonna talk about those brakes in just a second. Another thing you'll see on most modern bikes now are these lock-on grips. It actually has an Allen screw, an Allen bolt here that holds the grip in place. It should lock it in place. Now I have this thing tightened down all the way. Most of the time when you see these, they are metal. This is plastic. I have this tightened down as tight as you can get it. Look at this. That is not locked on. So that's definitely gonna be one of our first upgrades here. Now let's talk about the steer tube. This is a tapered steer tube, which means the top is smaller in diameter than the bottom, which makes this thing a little bit more future-proof because that's the direction forks are going. Now this fork does not have a tapered tube. It does have an adapter in there. So if you wanna upgrade the fork at some point, you will also have to upgrade the parts inside here to make everything work, but that's not that big of a deal. Now moving down to the forks, these are pretty ample forks for the price point. They are coil spring and there are some issues with that and I'll show you out on the trail later on in the video what some of those issues are, but it does have preload adjustment so you can crank that spring down to make it a little stiffer and it does have a lockout on the other side if you don't want it to bounce on the climbs. Now the downside to spring style forks is they are typically heavier than air forks and they don't always give you the best performance in that you kind of have to pick a medium point over how stiff you want those springs. So you're either gonna sacrifice hard bumps or you're gonna make the thing very rigid on the small stuff. But I'll show you that a little later on in the trail. Now moving down here, we've got disc brakes. These are cable actuated disc brakes, not hydraulic, but that's kind of typical for the price point. And they actually do work pretty well once you bed them in. And that's a big issue with a lot of uh, new mountain bike purchases is people don't bed in their brakes and then they say the brakes don't work. Now, again, referencing that video where I show you how to build a mountain bike, I do show you how to bed the brakes in and I will have that timestamp down below if you wanna check that out, if that's an issue you're having. These wheels are 29 inch wheels, which is kind of the new standard. They are inner tube wheels and there's a little bit of a debate whether or not you can convert these as is over to a tubeless wheel people have done it i wouldn't recommend it with this tire and wheel package but if you got new tires that's certainly something you could go for these tires are a pretty fat tire and that does mean you can air them down and give yourself a little bit of cushiness the tread is so so at least for my style of riding and the terrain i ride on so this might be something you want to change but it just depends upon what kind of riding you're doing if you're doing bike paths 
and mild trails. These are more than ample and they're actually pretty nice tires for the price. The frame itself is a very nice aluminum frame and the welds actually look really great. Now the graphics on here are subtle and they are stickers and I believe we can remove those with a heat gun if we wanted to. And I'm gonna do another video of upgrading this bike that I'm gonna have linked down below at some point and we will be removing those stickers. Now let's address this thing. Now this is a dropper seat post and this is where the name actually gets its bike or at least the DP portion. And this is the first and really only department store style bike or big box store style bike that I've seen with a dropper post. Let me show you how this thing works. It's pretty cool. You got a little lever on the handlebar and when you push that it releases the seat and allows the seat to come up and down. It works really similar to an office or desk chair. So when you're riding trails you can bring the bike up or the seat up so you can have a good straight leg while you're pedaling and when you hit the downhills you can push the button and with your body weight push the thing down and now you've got the seat out of your space so you can ride a little bit more aggressively the drivetrain on this is a one by drivetrain which means it has a single chain ring in the front and a large set of gears in the back it has a wider ratio in the back than you've seen on the normal three buys which gives you what should be about the same range but with less complication now the downsides to this one is it doesn't have as much range as i would like but it does have enough and it is good for most trail riding and the here the derailleur doesn't have a clutch and we'll show you what a clutch does and doesn't do a little later on in the video coming around to the back side the back also has a cable actuated disc brake just like the one on the front and it works as i said pretty well um, just make sure you do bed those in Another thing that you don't see on most uh, big box store bikes are metal pedals. This actually does have a metal pedal, although on this ride, you can see here it's stiffened up. I may have broken this one. So uh, I'm going to take this thing home and we'll see if we can get this thing spinning freely or this might be one of my first upgrades. Now the footage that I got on this ride is right out of the box. Zero modifications to the bike with the exception of the removal of the kickstand. The kickstand that comes on this bike is the worst kickstand I've ever seen. I don't like kickstands. This one's the worst. Uh, but as you can see, it is a pretty competent trail bike. It does get down the trail pretty well, but there were still some of those shortcomings. You're about to actually hear one of them, right? There. All that clatter you heard going over those rocks, that was a combination of the chain slapping the frame and the forks bottoming and topping out. And uh, a top out and a bottom out of the fork is when the fork either hits the bottom of its travel or rebounds and slaps the top of the travel. And that chain slap, I'm gonna show you an example of in a little bit. Now, coming through this section, you'll be able to hear and also see the brakes and the tire performance. Um, right after this little section, I'm gonna start a little bit of a downhill section Section. The brakes on this bike are ample, although when you assemble the bike, you do want to make sure that you properly bed the brakes in for them to actually work correctly. A lot of people complain about brakes not working correctly, and that's usually the issue. Um, and I do have a whole video on how to assemble bikes coming out that'll go over the bedding in process. Now, through this section, you can also hear a lot of tire slip. You can probably hear that against the rocks. These tires are good, but they're not great and definitely something to upgrade if you are looking for upgrades that will really make a big difference on this bike. And this will give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that chain slap. The sound you're hearing is the chain actually slapping around and hitting the frame and you can see it here doing that and this would be avoided if you were using a clutch derailleur. So what's my takeaway on the Schwinn Axum DP? It actually I like it a lot. It's a good platform for upgrading, but if you're just gonna be doing mild trail riding, this should be all the bike you really need. I wouldn't immediately go and start spending money on it unless you know exactly what you want. I would take the thing out on some rides, figure it out. You will probably figure out, depending on what kind of riding you're doing, it's more than ample. And if there's some shortcomings on it, you'll figure out what to upgrade along the way. Now you can pick this thing up. I have a link down below to where you can order it online. Don't get it through Amazon, a lot of other places. People are buying them and reselling them marked up. Just be patient. They've been on and out of stock on Walmart's website, but you can get this thing for a pretty good deal. So for somebody just getting into mountain biking, somebody looking for an extra bike or maybe something for your kid, I think this is a great, great bike, so check it out. Now down below, if you do order this thing online, I have a link to the video on how to build a mountain bike, how to set it up, tune it, bed the brakes in, all that good stuff. So you're gonna wanna check that out to make sure your bike is safe and ready to go down the trail. Even if you buy it from the store, I would still watch that video and look at how to tune the bike up because chances are the people at Walmart or whoever's putting this thing together don't know how to put together a mountain bike and you don't want your bike to be unsafe. And I'm also going to have a video of the upgrades that I'm going to do to the bike, and I'm going to show you how to do it with quality parts. A lot of the other videos out there show you how to use cheap, 
parts bought online from overseas, from companies that have no real support if something goes wrong. I'm gonna show you how to get parts cheap, cheaper than you can get the cheap parts, and really build a quality bike. So hit that subscribe button here, go check out my other channel for the build videos, and check out all the links down below. You should be able to get a really good bike out of this setup. Thanks for watching.